When that when that happens to that guy, you should tell him that he wants all their badge numbers and all their names, and that you're going to file harassment suits against them. I found that when I filed complaints against the RCMP and they started harassing me and doing that sort of shit with me and pulling me over, I start asking them for their names, their badges, and tell them flat out that I am going to file harassment suits against you if you continue with this. And eventually it stops, but you have to, you have to be able to stand up for yourself and speak up against them, and not a lot of people are able to do that. Over by the place. Every police officer in this town pulls you over, we're going to arrest you if you don't give us your name and let us in your vehicle. If you don't have to let them search your This particular guy that I'm talking about, he was in Prince Rupert on Sunday, driving his Corvette around, and got a hold of the RCMP, got a hold of the highway patrol because they talked to each other, and they told him to pull him over on the way back. So there's three cops on the way back from Prince Rupert pulling him over. Just to harass them. No, it wasn't doing nothing. They said it was harassing the drivers. Oh, of course. The RCMP got called to my house, and I told them nothing was going on, and that my husband had gone to bed, and my son was already in bed. This was recently, and it's in there. Okay. But they said that I was obstructing justice if I didn't let them into my home. And when I turned around and went into my home. They handcuffed me and put my face to the floor and then proceeded to let themselves into my home. And there was nothing going on and my husband was asleep in the room and he said, let her up, I'm leaving. And after that they had the nerve to come into my bedroom and say, well, is it, if there's anything else we can do for you then. I told them to get the hell out of my house. And I said, what, what makes you think that I'd ever call you for help? And that's the sort of thing that they do around here. And it's like alienating the youth and the women, and it's just bad. Yeah, that's the thing. Who are they accountable to? We all have bosses that we work for that we're accountable to. So who's their boss that they have to be accountable to? And this just mm -hmm. happens, too. And so I'm just going to um, ask uh, a lot of people, um, well, I've heard from a number of people here that there may be some people I haven't heard. So if you haven't had a chance to say anything yet, you wanted to say something like this, I'm going to back and stand up and then come up with you. Uh, you know, I mean, if this is just a bank session, so we'll all feel better, that's good, you know. But you can go on the internet, you can find tens of thousands of videos of cop brutality. And we all know that they're way out of control. I followed this for, you know, 20, 40, 50 years, okay, I've noticed that. And they're out of control now. They're all liars, thieves, and murderers, all of them. And, you know, giving instances of, of more over and over, how are we going to stop this? They need to be taken control of. From what I can see is that they are not, they are not taking the, rot the rotten apples out of the forest. When, when they commit a crime, they're given a paid vacation for a year while they, they so-called investigate, and then it's exonerated and the guy goes right back to work. Well, there's an old saying that if one rotten apple will, will ruin a barrel. Well, that's what's happened with the police force, okay? They need to be, these rotten apples need to be taken out. And I think these days, if you did that, there'd be no police left. <laughs> And that's what needs to be done, so I don't know. Is there any point to everybody telling you what's going on when you know what's going on every day, every day? Um, I mean, I must... I'm assuming it's not a rhetorical question. I understand the frustration and, uh, you know, I've worked in police accountability uh, issues um, for a number of years now, and uh, I agree with you that it's very frustrating work. Um, but I think it's really important uh, to push back um, and so one of the points of this uh, consultation is that there are issues um, that, that uh, telling the police that there are issues and that we've come to this community and that compared to other communities, I have to say, um, compared to other communities, uh, there is a disproportionate number of, 
uh, concerning events that have been brought forward at this workshop uh, compared to even just being out the road it's at Smithers. The same in every community. And, uh, you know, I, I agree with you that the net effect might be only a change in management of this detachment, um, which can make a difference in policing here, but in the RCMP it typically means moving the uh, police officer to a different detachment. Right. Um, uh, promotion. But, but there will, there, I, I can assure you that um, there will be some um, policy outcomes from this workshop in this community as a result of us being here today, uh, taking your feedback and, and working on some of the issues that have been identified. Uh, we always have some progress. You're right that you know, we, we, you know, we're never going to solve all the issues with policing. There are always going to be abuses of power. Um, but uh, this will help also uh, reinforce the province's political will to bring in the civilian investigation body, which I think is very important uh, for these complaints to stop the system of police investigating themselves. So even if it only succeeds in keeping the province on track to do that, then that would be a, a good success in itself. So it's not, it's not pointless, and I, I would urge you not to see it that way, because it is an important process. Um, but you're right, it's not going to address some They're of all the... integrated, you know? I mean, they'll investigate something, put it to a special prosecutor, and, and he'll say, oh, there's no case here. That yeah, yeah, no, it's very frustrating. I mean, I, you're preaching to the choir. I, I, you know, there's never been a charge against a police officer for a police-involved death in the history of British Columbia. And it's not because no one's ever inappropriately been killed by a police officer. It's because there's a problem with the system. So you're, you're certainly preaching to the choir on this kind of stuff, but I do think there is a purpose to doing this. So, uh, does anyone else have anything else that they uh, have a question? Yeah. Yep. Um, I wanted to find out if, uh, if, uh, the last time my brother was sleeping in the park over there. Yep. The cops came and they walked him up right in my field. And I went over there to try and see if I could take, take him home. Because he's going to make it a few feet away from my place. Yep. And they walked him up outside in that field there. Yep. And then, then I went, when I was going over there, they tried to use one of those spray cans on me. They, they told me to stand back. I told them, I talked, I said, I just live right, right over there and I want to take my brother home. And they took, they took, him, they took him to jail and they beat, they beat the crap out of him to jail. And I got the picture of it too. And he had seizure in jail and the cops he wouldn't, wouldn't call the ambulance on him for him. Either. And the security guard there is a half the phone down this place. I found that out about a couple of hours after when I was going to take him home. Anyone else? Yeah, Jim. Yeah, I just wanted to ask. So um, you said you got a you got a picture of that. What did you get a picture of? It? Yeah. Alcohol, my breath, you can, I uh, yeah, but there's nothing. 
And I say, the way I walk, I see a guy old church for me. And, and they put me in the water when I was sober. And I stayed awake all that time. And they thought I was drunk or sober. And I stayed awake for eight hours to let me out. Is this the same time as the No, before that time. time. The girls talking about earlier, they always go after the same people, whether they're drinking or not. How long ago was that? That was a couple months ago. So in the last, uh, let's say in the last year, how many times have they... Uh, well, uh, they are, well, I can't even sit in a party and let them be... They walk in the air on your bikes and they come up to me. You've been drinking at them? No, I'm not drinking. I'm sober. I just enjoy the sun. And uh, even, uh, even like uh, my workers, they, 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 they didn't. They didn't try to talk to me uh, cops about, about the way I am. There's one cop and he, he talked to me, really you I said, and he, and, and, uh, but he transferred out in Paris now, but he knew, he, he knew everybody over at the office and like uh, he, they told that, uh, so one of them uh, workers had, uh, my workers all told the cop, he seems comfortable, but they told me, he said, he just all like that, he's not, he walks like that, he's not, so when he sees me, he's not drunk, he walks like that all the time. And when he was in Terry's I never got harassed by any cop until now he's transferred and Different cops are telling on me. They keep up what is bugging me about it is they, they know I'm not drinking. They brought in a new unit. They brought in a set of West and White Maxes and turned the lease on me. This is like a brain in a room. I've had the experience of one of them all the time. So I know what they're like. More gear they put on them and what color they figure they have. I had a pearl carry over there last night. So I'm going to talk to you guys after about that film and mm -hmm. this stuff. Um, and uh, I just want to say thanks very much to everyone for coming. I really appreciate it coming around again. And uh, there's, uh, I've got some more rest and books in the car, so don't go uh, without. Um, and